What's up, TJ Grant here with Quad Poly, and today I'm going to show you how to do this inside of here. So as a disclaimer, I ended up watching the trailer that Video Copilot released for their brand new plugin called Orb, and it's all about being able to make planets inside of After Effects, and the results are absolutely gorgeous. But after watching that, I realized I may be able to actually pull off the same thing inside of Fusion because Fusion already has a fully integrated 3D engine, and these were the results that I was able to do with that. So as a benefit to the community, I wanted to go ahead and release these project files for you to be able to use on any project that you want, both commercial and personal. My only requirements are number one, make awesome stuff with it. Number two, make any modifications that you see fit. If you're a much more advanced fusion artist and you can think of a better way in order to implement some of these materials and settings, then by all means go ahead and make those modifications but you cannot turn around and sell the template. Please release any modifications you have back out to the community because I want us to become that much stronger and that much better as fusion artists. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and see what this template can do. So inside this template, I've broken it up into some very simple categories. On the left hand side here are all the parameters that deal with the textures of the objects. Then, you have the actual objects here. You have two 3D scenes. This is going to be your main setup scene. So that's going to include your bounce lights, your directional, and another spotlight for the shadows. And then, of course, a main camera. This second scene has to deal primarily with the atmosphere that's going to be on the planet. So it's going to give that nice glow along the event horizon there and you can adjust those parameters using these uh, nodes over here. So you're gonna have your, your glow that's behind the planet. You're gonna have some noise that you can adjust. And then this is gonna take care of the noise that's on top of the planet or the glow. And you can adjust the colors and the blur settings. And then Finally, down here, you have another merge 3D scene, and that's just going to take care of your stars behind the planet. It has its own glow, its own color correction, and then it merges together all into one final scene. And then there is a saver here so that you can save out any animations or images that you want as you create the planets. Let's start at the top here. So the very top object is going to control the rings. Now the ring is just a very simple 3D disk mesh that I've created and all it has is a UV map and the UV map actually comes with the texture files that you download so that you can create your own and you can see right here what that looks like. All right. Here, let's go ahead and pull up the other view so that we can see what we're doing, how it affects everything. After I've imported the image of the rings, I've just made it into a mask. And then you can see the transparency that's on there. And then all I've done is blur it out a little bit. And then over here, I've added a background node that allows me to have a gradient that is just going to be overlaid on top of here to color these rings. And you can adjust the color of the rings using these, this gradient over here. And then it gets applied to the 3D mesh and it just goes down into the actual scene itself. Now, if you don't want the rings, just simply disconnect it and now you don't have to worry about rings. The next section has to deal with the land and the water. Okay, so the way that I've set that up is I've imported a mask. You can make any bitmap that you want a mask. And then that gets applied to the actual surface image here. It gets tied into a merge node. And this merge node gets tied into the water settings, which I'll go through in just a second. And then over here, we can also adjust the color. So we can give you some, you know, adjust the gain. 
um, the lift, the gamma, you know, just giving you something to kind of mess with the watercolors there, as well as doing some simple color correction. So if you wanted to have a different looking color, you can, of course, adjust those colors and make something different. Okay, so if you just have like a black and white image there, you can, of course, adjust all those colors. Okay, that gets mapped into a texture 2D thing. 2D nodes that we can adjust the scale of that and then it finally gets attached to the material as well I have also used another black and white image to be used as a bump map so that we can get some nice surface detail going on there and that gets applied to a transform an unsharp mask so that I can sharpen up any any parameters inside of the bitmap there so that it looks a little bit better and not as blurry and then of course the bump mat settings so if I wanted to really increase it I can or decrease it and then it gets tied into the material and then it just goes down into a simple sphere shape so the next element is going to be the water and all I've done is import a bitmap this gets tied into a transform node it then gets merged with a background node so that we can add a little extra color or you can do some other nifty effects with that if you wanted to. And that gets merged down below into the land element to start to fill in the areas where it has been masked out. And then over here, I've also used a color correction node so that in case you use a black and white one, you can see here that the color is actually getting changed along the surface there. Okay. Then it gets tied into the specular intensity inside of the material down here. All right. So you can see as the light travels along it, it's going to be affecting that. And this is handy because I've done it to kind of mimic a glow along the surface. And I could also increase the intensity or bring it down. If I change the specular exponent, that's going to make that spec a little bit wider or a little bit sharper. So you could really, you know, adjust how you want that to look overall. And then, of course, we can also scale that down to change the side or whatever it is that you want. The next section that we have are the clouds. This is going to take care of everything that you need in order to make your clouds look fairly realistic along the surface there. So all I've done is import a bitmap. Yeah, I have supplied this image along with the texture download. It's just a simple 8K by 4K texture image. And that gets tied into a mask. And that mask is applied to the image. It then gets merged into um, another node to apply some color or you know sharpen it, whatever it is that you want to do. It then gets applied into a texture 2D so that you can adjust it and scale it, do whatever you need to do with it. And then it gets applied to a material. That material is then mapped onto the sphere. And then that gets placed right over the top of the planet itself. There's also a bump map, so if I wanted to add some extra, some extra little bumps here and there to give the cloud some depth from far away, you're able to accomplish that using the bump map. And then the last section on this side is going to be your atmosphere. And all this is, is it uses a falloff node, and you can adjust the falloff here. You can also choose the color that you want. So if I want a blue atmosphere or a green one, you know, whatever color it is that you desire, okay? And you can also adjust the opacity of it. So there's a little little extra features that you can put in here for your glancing colors. Okay? And then that gets fed into another 3D shape, which is just a sphere. And then that gets plugged into its own merge 3D scene. Now, the reason why I did that is because I want to use this falloff to control the glows. 
on top of the surface here. Okay, so let's walk through those controls. So for the atmosphere node here, okay, it gets tied into a render 3D node, and then it feeds into these two different glows. So this first glow is for the background, all right? It's actually getting placed behind the object. So the way that works is that I can increase the glow size. This is going to be the outside of the planet, so I can really increase it or decrease it, all right? Um, I added a noise as a mask, all right? So I can reduce the contrast. I can increase or decrease the detail in it. I can adjust the brightness. And since it is a 2D noise, I can also use a seethe rate. And what that's going to do, if I were to play the animation, it would just see that similar to how you're looking. adjust any of the other parameters that you want there and then that gets fed back into another merge node. The second glow is going to be taking care of everything on top of the surface of the planet. So I can increase the glow size there and that gets fed into some color curves and then another blur. Now this is handy because the closer that you get to the object, if I were to move the camera, you're going to start to see that there are in fact multiple spheres on top of one another and so what that blur is going to do it'll help blur the line so that you don't see the actual edges of the 3d objects other than the first one which is the land mass over here okay so let's go over our main 3d scene here this is going to hold all of our primary objects and we have all of our lights inside of this scene here as well as the camera and all the other objects okay so what I have up here is we have a bounce light a spotlight and a main directional light so this is tied into a merge 3d node and then a transform 3d node so what's handy about this is that the spotlight and the directional light are close together and what the spotlight does is that it casts the shadow onto the surface of the object. This is really only necessary when you have rings around the planet or if you are, uh, let's say you have another object inside of here and like a moon and you needed to cast a shadow onto the surface of the planet. That's the only time that you would really need that spotlight. If you don't need it, like if you just have a planet image itself, you could go ahead and just turn that off to save some render time. And then under the transform node up here, we have our rotational values that you can adjust. So you know, if I wanted to change the direction of the light, it's pretty straightforward. Just use the rotational angles to Go ahead and adjust that and that's going to adjust both of those at the same time so your spotlight with the shadow always moves along with your directional light up there the next one is the bounce light so if i wanted to have some illumination on the inside of the planet there i can i found this very helpful if um Let's say I wanted to have like a dark section of the planet and I have like city lights or lights on a planet. I could actually just have this affect the specular of that material and that spec is going to be um, just use the image 
for the lights as part of that and that's going to help kind of give you that shadowed light look on the opposite side of a planet. Alright, so inside the download itself, here are the different files that you will find. There is the scene, which is going to be your template file. Then the model is just a simple ring. And then I've given you some textures that I've created. So this is going to be your lava planet, your gas planet, in case you wanted to make a gas planet texture. You can load that up and put that on there. And I made it colorless so that you can add some color if you want. Um, there's some lava for the lava planet example that you see here. There is the natural planet that you saw in the promo videos where is that blue planet. So I've given you some textures just for the surface there and they're all tileable. Uh, I've given you a moon crater one that you can play around with and as well as the rings texture and of course the Photoshop file which is going to handle the UV textures uh, for the ring itself and then a star background. The last object to be concerned with here that helps out with the whole overall look is in fact the camera. Now the camera is a target camera so I can zoom in, physically move the camera to get in closer. And, and since it does have a target, that target's going to be based right in the center so you can just move the target. Um, and that's just going to help you to be able to move around and create different views of their planet itself. And then of course the last scene itself is going to be your star background and all I've done is I've just made a really really long really big plane that I've then just tiled this texture image onto. Alright so let's walk through and change this lava planet into a natural one. So the first thing I like to do is adjust my atmosphere just so that I can see the actual difference behind it and then I'm going to change this glow size down almost to practically nothing there. I don't really want that style for this one. Next I'm going to come over to my land node and I'm just going to switch out my land textures here so I'm going to go into the planet template here and go into the textures and I'm going to choose the natural planet and for this one I'm going to do the mast image here so I'm going to hit one on the keyboard so that it appears in this viewport here okay you can see that mask working for us that gets tied into the bitmap mask and then I'm going to load in my color. So underneath the template here, let's just choose our natural planet base color. That will change that. And then at the top here, I actually don't mind using this same texture as a surface water. So what I'm going to do is come over to the color correction and I'm going to change that to a blue color. Just kind of change some of that so it looks pretty good. And then for the transform node I'm going to change that to like 0.2. Okay. You can kind of see how that's looking there. Then I also want to take this atmosphere and I think I'm going to drop some of the opacity down on that. And reduce some of the fall off. Just bring that back up a little bit. Then under the water settings here, I'm going to reduce my specular intensity down. Then let's 
take a look at our main 3D scene. And I want to just take this camera and I'm going to back it out just a little bit here. I'll bring it down. Grab the center of that, just kind of bring it back down towards the center of the planet there. Just click on fit. Okay. And then I'm going to remove the rings just by coming to this node here and I'm just going to disconnect it so we don't have the rings. And then for the color correction, I'm going to change some of the color on the land here. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is under the color correction tool. Uh, I'm just going to change, change it to maybe a little more natural color. So I can change, change it to some greens there. Change the shadows to. Well, let's make it a more of a brown there, and I can increase the contrast or increase it there. So now we have some green onto that. And so you can see just how quickly we're able to really start to change the overall look and the feel of the planet just by adjusting some of these parameters. Okay. Um, now I'm going to change that to the planet roughness value there. So I can have a different bump map going. And I may increase the height of that. And then as far as the clouds go, I may increase the intensity of that or drop it down just a little bit there. Sharpen up that uh, spec there so it's not overbearing. The clouds aren't. All right. And that will about wrap it up for us. And then the last section here, since it's not normal in space for planets to have a bounce light, all right, um, now I do, I kind of like the look because it does give it a little bit more of a style, but if you are going for realism because there's nothing for light to be bounced off of out here, I, you could just turn off the bounce light itself and then that's going to give you that nice, much more natural looking planet. So that about wraps up our coverage of this planet template. I hope you guys make some really amazing work with this. And if you have any ideas about how to better implement some of these these materials, or if you have uh, a better technique to really make the image pop, then please go ahead and share that. And share that with the community or make modifications to this template. And as always, if you want to be updated on when I release brand new tutorials or even project files such as this, please like and subscribe to this channel. And with that being said, I will see you guys on the next tutorial.